there's a quote that came to mind like while I was watching this that kind of summarized like the, the the later part of the series. The greatest trick the devil ever pulled was convincing the world that he does not exist. I say that reminds me of this series, the later part of the series, because that therapy scene was my favorite scene in the series. Out of everything, the film, the documentary, the, the Broadway show, all of that never put the spotlight on cuss like this series did. It was like a quick scene, so I think it just, it. I don't think we get, had time to sit with it. You said your mother's a bad mother, yet she made the ultimate sacrifice for you. Can't say that about your fathers. My father. Fathers, plural. Cuss is the only real father I have. He's the only person that cared about me, he loved me. He also told you to be a monster. I mean, nothing in the ring, not in real life. Does your life look like you really understood that? You were 14 when he drilled that into you. Bitch. See you next week, Mike. Cuz Ashley told Mike Tyson, you're a monster. You're a god. Stuff like that. And it gave Mike Tyson confidence, gave him the confidence, uh, confidence, I'm talking like him now. It gave him the confidence to be like one of the greatest boxers that we ever had, but it didn't it didn't fit in like his personal life. I think he tried to take that ego, that boxing ego, that Iron Mike ego outside of the ring and, and this is where all the issues start to come. So older Mike be seeing all this, the backlash from Cuss and his bad decisions and Unfortunately, he started going to drugs. I said, you know, the therapist brought up cuss, but something else it did was point out the importance of therapy. Up to that point, kid Mike, young know, Mike, <laughs> box go T Mike, I don't know what you want to call him, I don't know, middle aged Mike, I don't know. But up to the point where we had old Mike, like the current Mike, it's, it, it, it pointed out that he never thought about therapy. He had all the money to do it, all the resources to get therapy, but he didn't think about it until he was older. And as soon as he started therapy, that's when he started to change. I think with us, with us, I think in our head, well, first is the money and resources. All of us don't have the money and resources to get therapy, but we have insurance and stuff like this to get therapy, y'all. So if we have the resources to get it, we don't get it, I think. The second thing stopping us from getting, and I'm saying this because I went through therapy and I was the same way. I was like, I don't need it. I don't need nobody telling me like how to live my life and stuff like that. But I did therapy for like two years, y'all, and I, I'm like an expert at communication with my wife now. But anyway, <laughs> the second the second thing is it's just our ego. It's just our ego. Like I said myself, I was like, you know, I don't need therapy. Like, you know, it's just somebody reading a book telling me how to live my life. But nah. Nah, nah, therapy y'all, it's just somebody that watch other people like a, a countless of other people in same scenarios as you and this gives them the tools to tell you exactly what you need to hear. So they're not trying to say, okay, I'm gonna tell you how to live, a lot, live your life. They're just saying, well, I seen somebody else, you know, make mistakes, make the same mistakes that you're about to make, but so maybe you should like, try this, maybe you should try it in a different way. So I like, coming coming back to the series, I like that this series put a little spotlight on therapy 